The goldfish, Caracius orotus, is without a doubt one of the most popular aquarium fish. Centuries of selecting out and breeding such abnormal specimens has produced over 125 breeds of goldfish that vary greatly in size, body shape, fin configuration and coloration. With such great varieties, you may wonder, where exactly do they come from? To dig deeper into this matter, let's go back to Imperial China during the Jin Dynasty in the year of 266 to 420 AD. During this period, various species of carp, collectively known as Asian carp, have been bred and reared as food fish for thousands of years in East Asia. Some of these normally grey or silver species have a tendency to produce red, orange or yellow colour mutations. During the Tang Dynasty from the year 618 to 907 AD, it was popular to raise carp in ornamental ponds and water gardens. A natural genetic mutation produced yellowish-orange rather than silver coloration. People began to selectively breed the gold variety instead of the silver variety, keeping them in ponds or other bodies of water. On special occasions at which guests were expected, they would be moved to a much smaller container for display. By the Song Dynasty, year 960 to 1279, the selective domestic breeding of goldfish was firmly established. In 1162, the Empress of the Song Dynasty ordered the construction of a pond to collect the red and gold variety. By this time, people outside the imperial family were forbidden to keep goldfish of the gold or yellow variety, as yellow being the imperial color. This is probably the reason why there are more orange goldfish than yellow goldfish, even though the latter are genetically easier to breed. In 1276, the occurrence of other colors apart from red and gold was first recorded. A Chinese publication of this period mentioned the snow white fish as well as gold, silver and other colored fish being bred and sold at Hangzhou in China. During the Ming Dynasty 1368 to 1644, goldfish also began to be raised indoors, which permitted selection for mutations that would not be able to survive in ponds. The first occurrence of fancy-tailed goldfish was recorded during this period. In 1603, goldfish were introduced to Japan. Chinese traders first brought and sold them to the samurai and nobility as highly prized pets. Like China, the goldfish serves as a symbol of wealth, fortune and good luck. By the mid-Edo period, goldfish had become popular pets, but their allure was reserved only for aristocrats. In 1611, goldfish were introduced to Portugal, where it became a status symbol. Around 1705, they were first introduced into England and into France through the port of Lorraine about the year 1750. By the end of the 18th century, they were widespread in Europe. They were highly regarded in southern Europe because of their metallic scales and symbolized good luck and fortune. As a result, it became a tradition for married men to give their wives a goldfish on their first anniversary as a symbol for the prosperous years to come. This tradition quickly died as goldfish became more available, losing their status. Around 1850, goldfish became the first foreign fish species introduced to North America. By 1889, a goldfish farm had been established in Maryland, and by the turn of the century, most of the fancy breeds were known to American aquarists. From this on, goldfish had been selectively bred for aesthetic purposes. Commercial goldfish are suited for indoor living only, where their size is usually constrained by the size of the tank. But if released into the wild, goldfish go from cute to villainous. With enough food, proper water temperatures and ample room to roam, goldfish can balloon. In fact, people around the world occasionally pull in monster goldfish, a far cry from the miniature versions we're accustomed to.